This is dedicated to all 2D artists out there who've ever thought about learning 3D, but for one reason or another didn't. That's not working now, brother. Maybe 3D just doesn't appeal to you in the same way that 2D does. Or maybe the super steep learning curve pushed you away. Whatever your reasons are for not jumping into 3D, they're totally valid. Yeah, 3D sucks! No, no, ho hold on a minute. As you know from this channel, my obsession with multi-view rigs has led me to a pursuit of 360 degree rigs. And as I began learning the tool set needed to create those, something kind of happened. I'm finally making a serious return to the study of 3D character animation. In this video, I'd like to share the sequence of events that led me to learn 3D again, the amazing works that have inspired me, an examination of the 3D workflow, and what all this means for this channel. If you're a 2D artist or animator who's thought about getting into 3D but haven't, I want to encourage you to take another look. Like any advanced tool set, there's a pretty big price to pay to learn it, but I think the returns are well worth it. So come with me as we go from 2D to 3D and back. My name is Law Jackson, and in this video, I'm gonna mention a handful of incredible artists who have inspired me, challenged me, and shown me a path to a future I wanna be a part of. I hate to admit it, but I don't really like learning new things, so I've given this a lot of thought. I only recently started learning Moho, and now I'm learning Blender. Uh, yeah. Well, don't get me wrong, the urge to get into 3D has been with me for years. I even think my interest in rigging and puppet animation was a part of that desire to realize my creations in three dimensions. I was working on my second 360 degree rig when I came across animator and Moho superstar Yang Shi's incredible 360 degree rig. The project is fully documented on video and it's even for sale. I was excited because I had a glimpse into the future of my project with a clear path on how to get there. But as I watched the demonstration, I wondered how I would accomplish arm and leg swings in perspective. Vertrulean bones? Special animation events? Smart bone actions? <sighs> Moho brought me closer than ever to the kind of poseable doll that I had always wanted to create, but there was still something missing. Then this happened. Over the holiday break, I had a chance to catch up on some animated films. DreamWorks's The Bad Guys and Netflix's Sea Beasts. If you haven't seen them, check them out. It'll be time very well spent. And while you're at it, check out Ron's Gone Wrong. There's something really heartfelt about the storytelling there. But Sea Beasts in particular hit me with a fresh wave of inspiration. The well-crafted character designs, the fantastic lead characters, and the wild adventure made me feel the way I used to feel years ago when I watched animated films. I was so inspired that it got me thinking about learning 3D again. Well, while browsing ArtStation, I saw something really interesting. I saw Toon shaded 3D characters, but it blew me away. I've been trying to fake 3D with my 2D art style for a couple of years now but here are 3D characters that are rendered in a 2D art style. And it struck me, why don't I try to do that? Well, before I get into what it takes to learn this stuff, because there's a lot to it, I'd like to share some of the work that has inspired me and, and captured my imagination.
what does it take? Let's talk about the 3D workflow. The baseline knowledge required to create characters in Toon Shaded 3D is enormous. There's no getting around this. I've identified six major areas of study to learn this stuff. Modeling, UV unwrapping, texturing and shading, rigging, animation, and rendering. If you're an absolute Blender beginner like me, start with Blender Guru's donut tutorial. Not because you want to make donuts, but because without realizing it, you'll be completely initialized on the Blender interface You'll have working knowledge across several modeling methods, UV unwrapping, texturing, and even the basics of animation and rendering. It's like a mini course disguised as a basic tutorial. So I'm going to focus on the 3D software Blender to achieve the Toon Shaded 3D style, even though you can accomplish this style in any 3D software. Look, it may seem like a lot, and, and it is. But if you were learning to draw or animate with no prior knowledge, I'd say the depth of study is pretty similar. Getting a good grasp of these things is the price that we have to pay in order to go from 2D to 3D and back to 2D. So the biggest and deepest area of study will be the tune shaded part, but we'll get to that in a second. Let's go over the six areas of study and talk a little about the importance of each. Modeling. There are a couple of reasons we need to learn modeling. In order to translate your own 2D creations into 3D, you'll need to have a solid understanding of how to build, shape, and modify geometric forms. Even if you're creating your character from a base mesh or using parts from another model, you'll want to have maximum control over the results by knowing how to build things from scratch. We can start with some simple low-poly characters in order to get the hang of the 3D environment and tool set. And once you've got the hang of the basics, let's work up to more and more complex projects. Another reason you'll want to learn how to model is to learn good topology. Topology is the web of geometric edges and polygons that define the character. Good topology looks like a well thought out pattern and will make texturing, rigging, and animating the character much, much easier. Sculpting. Sculpting is a type of modeling that allows you to push and pull organic forms to make your character. However, at its core are still vertices, edges, faces, and polygons. The results you can achieve are astounding. UV unwrapping. The UV unwrapping process is the area of study where we take our finished model and create a wrapper for the geometry. Once we have this wrapper, we can do all sorts of things with it. This wrapper is called a texture map. We might paint on it, stick text or graphics on there, or just plop down solid patches of color. If you want it to go for a realistic end result or something super cartoony, this is the stage where you make all of that happen. It's also super helpful to study the texture maps of other models to understand what parts of your character design should be painted and which details should be modeled. Tune shading, finally. Well, I was surprised to see 3D projects that look like hand-drawn cartoons, but there are a number of tricks that go into pulling this off, so toon shading will be the deepest area of our study here. The developers of the fighting game Guilty Gear developed a method of toon shading and shared what it all took to achieve those results. It's interesting to see that they made it a special point to kill the 3D look and apparently had to work really hard at it. Enormous effort was made to accomplish this, so I'd like to take a closer look at what they had to say about it. Now, let's dive into the details of how we did it, starting with the look of the characters. The characters needed to represent the 2D design well enough to appeal to the audience. The models had to be as good as the designs, or even better. And they had to look 2D as much as possible. To do this, our principle was simple. Kill everything 3D. If you find something that looks 3D, you just have to find a way to avoid it. This often boiled down to handcrafting by the artists. Because while the math within the shaders are always correct, correct is just not good enough. To get a convincing 2D look, everything on screen has to be an intentional choice, not just the result of a calculation. In a drawing, 
the artist will choose the most convincing distribution of light and darkness. But in a shader, it's all math, where unforgiving thresholds mercilessly split between light and dark. In cell shading, every little noise on the surface will become extremely distracting. The slightest difference in the surface normal may end up as a huge blotch. A convincing 2D look can only be achieved with precise control over the distribution of shades. Surface normals are one of the main reasons cell shading is so hard to get right. The smallest inconsistency in normals results in a super evident artifact under cell shading. The problem with the normals are that they are automatically calculated. And the result of this calculation is often not what the artist intended. On the other hand, shading in 2D art is very intentional. To close this gap, there was only one thing we had to do. Control the normals with intention. To get rid of unintentional shading, we modified the normals on every major feature of the character. The faces of the characters especially needed to be handcrafted to get clean anime look. Wow. That was really eye-opening. If they hadn't explained all that, we'd have no idea that that much went into it. Another game developer that has created jaw-dropping results with their tune-shaded approach is MiHoYo's Genshin Impact. Let's talk a little bit about shadows. Shadows are a surprisingly tricky subject, because in a drawing, the artist will make different choices than the math that's responsible for defining light and dark areas in 3D. It's possible to achieve a hand-drawn look for shadows in 3D, but many extra steps are required. Another approach is to draw the shaded areas onto the model. You can do this through texture maps or directly on the geometry. Still another approach is to edit the normals. This will make certain parts of the model more sensitive or less sensitive to light. If you don't want to bother with normal editing, you can create a special shadow map that sets rules on how the shadows appear. The treatment of shadows is the greatest concern on the face, because when the math of 3D software determines how the shadows form, the results aren't always artistic, like in 2D. So with normal editing or special shadow maps, you can have maximum control over where and how the shadows appear without leaving it for the computer to math those shadows in a way you might not want them to be. When I first started studying 3D, I was frustrated with having to learn so many deep areas of study. If you're an animator who just wants to explore posing and animating a tune-shaded character, you might just want to open up an existing project and have fun. In that case, you could download or purchase 3D models to experiment with, but it's highly likely that you're going to get stuck trying to figure out how to pose the model. So we'll want to take a look into rigging. It's helpful to understand how bones and facial controls on the character work. Here are the rigging methods that you're most likely to come across in Blender. There's a bunch more, but we're just going to focus on these. When it comes to getting a handle on rigging, I want to say it's a both and deal and not an either or kind of thing. Both and because even though you'll probably find one method that you like over another, it'll be most helpful to get to know a few rigging methods so that you're ready for whatever comes at you, especially if you're buying models. Finally, we can get to animation. I'm only going to touch on this topic lightly, but the real fun of playing with a tune-shaded 3D character is animating them. Rigging gave us an understanding of how the doll is set up, but now we can move along the timeline, create some interesting poses, and enjoy the advantages of a 3D character that looks like it was hand-drawn in our favorite art style. An animation tool that I have my eye on is Cascadeur. It looks like a really intuitive way of posing and animating the character. It looks like it was really designed for like action scenes and like fighting games, but the ease and the intuitive nature of the skeleton makes me really interested in using it. Now, it's important to note that Cascadeur is an add-on, so your character is going to already have to be set up with some rigging method already, either auto rig or mixamo or something. And while it's still in beta, this add-on is free my favorite price. Well, what does this all mean for the Rig Theory channel? I used to be a one software only kind of artist, but I found myself feeling stuck and frustrated because there were things I wanted to do and couldn't because my tool set didn't support it. And now that I'm in a new season of inspiration, I realize that a both and approach is better than an either or one. 
It's healthy and empowering to learn new things. Yeah, right, says the guy who doggedly stuck with Flash Animate for 20 years. Look, I always wanted the Rig Theory channel to examine rigging within many different softwares, and now I have a chance to do that. I still use Animate CC, and regarding Moho, I'm in the middle of a major project using that as the primary tool. I'm really enjoying Moho's rigging and animation tool set, but the drawing tools take a lot to get used to, so Animate CC is still going to be my go-to for vector character creation. Also, studying something as deep as 3D again helps me understand why there were so many requests for step-by-step -step tutorials without time-lapse. I hear you guys. Because I'm finding it extremely frustrating to watch sped up footage of stuff that I barely understand as I'm studying 3D now. I'll definitely keep that in mind for my future tutorials. So if you're a 2D artist, I want to invite you to take another look at 3D. And no judgment if you don't. There's so much to this tool set. I mean, we didn't even talk about dynamics, outlines, cloth, hair, environments, and a bunch of other things. There's so much to learn. But I hope you found something that will inspire you in your rigging adventures, whether they're 3D ones or 2D ones. Now to wrap up, here's my final proposition. I want to see more studios explore non-photorealistic rendering. I feel that not enough research has been put into this area and there's much more room to explore and improve. Photorealism is great, but it's not the only route. It's a crowded one too. If you look in different directions, there's a whole new horizon. You could be the pioneer that gets there first. The frontier is there, waiting to be discovered. Thank you. Well, that's it for me. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.